I'm Babs Gray, and now here I go again. I say, I want my freedom from the cranberry juice guy being everywhere I fucking look on the internet. <laughs> He's just living his life on that skateboard, baby. <laughs> I love uh, him. I just, they're trying to brand him, and it's very annoying. Okay. I know, I know. Uh, I'm Brandy <laughs> Posey, and uh, if you own snakes uh, for Halloween this year, try going as someone who's not a fucking creep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tess Barker, and the hottest summer I ever spent was in autumn in Los Angeles. <laughs> and this is Lady to Lady. Can you keep a secret? Neither can we. Hello! We got Barbara Brandy and of course Big Tess. We got a show for everyone that's the fucking best. Come on, baby. It's time to hang out with your favorite ladies. Ladies and ladies. Ladies and ladies. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Oh, my God. Ooh. So excited. It's such a weird time in the world, but I'm really excited about this hang and about our guest. Uh, she's the creator of The Daily Show, and she's just one of my heroes, one of the most just like tireless activists for women and women's rights and just an amazing person. Her nonprofit, The Abortion Access Front, is doing such... <laughs> Important work throughout the world. Liz Winstead, you guys. It's me. Liz. It's me. She's making be, jerk off blowjob I'm motions jerk off, off camera. Blowjob. Yes. But did you see so Babs, my friend? Yes. Um, your boyfriend, the cranberry skateboarding dude. Mm -hmm. um, did you see Stevie Nicks, you guys, this week who said yes. there wouldn't be Fleetwood Mac without abortion? Yes. No, I, I didn't see that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. For That's Stevie Nicks awesome. said. Fleetwood Mac would not, I am Fleetwood Mac, and Fleetwood Mac would not exist if there was an abortion. Oh and she God, might have I said a, her yeah. So Inject it into my veins. I <laughs> tell you what, I know. So we did on our TikTok, we did a TikTok where it's just like pictures of her and just being like, here's the pull quote, mm -hmm. you know, here you go again, wanting your freedom, have an abortion, Stevie Nicks, yes. you go. <laughs> hey, you, you, we don't get cranberry juice, man, without abortion. So, that you know. That is true. That's how it works. So. <laughs> yeah. He just got, he got a free truck and like a giant, you know, truck bed full of cranberry juice. So at least if you have sex with them, you're not getting a UTI. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, or you can, or you can be helpful with your UTI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, but also, let's just be real. This is a podcast called Lady to Lady. Mm -hmm. You can't be drinking that ocean spray sugar laden shit for your mm -hmm. UTIs. It does not, not help. It. You not have real. to drink the cranberry juice. I know the that stuff that tastes, tastes like shit. The one hundred percent that, right, that has no sugar in it. Shit. That's what goes through your veins. But also the Azo cranberry pills are helpful to ease the pain, not cure, ease the pain until you can get your treatment. But do not be fooled because it will mask the pain, but you still have a UTI. I so know. So those, those Azo tablets are good for like, I need to get to the doctor without having that pain, then I have to pee thing. Yeah. Sorry I brought it down, but I just want you to no, have good vaginal no. health. Everyone we are here needs for to know this. about the importance of cranberry juice. And vaginal I mean, health. I, re and vaginal I remember. Health. Absolutely. I haven't had a UTI for a while, but I remember those days of being like, if I just wait it out, it'll go away. Oh, it's like, God. no, girl, it's not happening. No, <laughs> no, you just got to get treated. <laughs> it really is terrible. No, yeah. it's truly, really, like, it's been a while. Torture. Me too. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Knock on wood. It's I been a while. It. Also, yeah. having sex has been a while. So there's a 100% chance that I'm going to get one if I ever feel like having sex again. But also, I just don't feel like having sex. <laughs> I feel like I had a bunch of sex and now I'm done. My vagina's like, <laughs> peace out. I'm not that into it. Do you just mean like, like Fair. you had a bunch of sex like in your life and you're like, all right, I'm good? You just. I don't finish. know. It's really funny because I was like, I would fuck anything. Twice on Sunday. Yeah, I like, I feel and that. then my sex drive just kind of dissipated. And the thing that's super interesting, like, you know, I'm in my fifties and now it's like, and my sex drive kind of like went, just kind of went away. Mm -hmm. And, and, but, but my drive to like kill everything that gets in the way of any woman trying to like just access mm -hmm. her fucking self-determination yeah. has kicked up 20 fold. Oh, and wow. I'm like, yeah. Awesome. And so it's kind of like, 
That's why women in their 50s get so much shit done. Because mm-hmm. when your libido kind of starts waning and oh. you have zero interest mm-hmm. in the male gaze and what it means to like attract or be putting that out there, mm-hmm. your shit and energy just goes other places. And I'm just like, literally the only thing I want to fuck is the patriarchy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're free. I know. That but I lie, still like... Mary. But wow. I still like my vibrator and stuff. Like, I'm super of into course. my vibrator. I'm super into my shit. But I'm just like, the thought of like, ugh, being out there and being like, oh, my God, and I'm on Bumble and these men are just awful and like the work, you know, I just can't. Yeah. No, I mean, we all want to come, but that doesn't mean you have to deal with a man. Not at all. A hundred percent. Or Not any kind of process with which to find one. It's like, <laughs> oh, my God. That does sound very their free. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Well, because there's like that, there's men that like stop jerking off and stop having sex because they think it adds to their productivity. Mm-hmm. I forget. I don't what want to called. know those men incels. No, but they're not incels. Men. It's not incels. It's less. Uh, it's less like evil than that. It's just men that like stop coming at all because they think it makes them more productive. No oh, a lot fa- of no fa- a lot of like no sports fa- guys, sport uh, athletes. Yeah. that's the word. Not sports guys. Athletes. <laughs> yeah. Athletes do that, right? They like try to channel their. There was shit prob- into that. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I feel like I that's guess, a lot of. I don't know. I want guys to jerk off. I think we need them to jerk off. Oh, 100%. More. Yeah, more should. <laughs> I agree, you're not, but it, it would you're be not cool. get better because you're not shooting your load. That's a dumb <laughs> analogy. <laughs> I mean, also, also, typical men. Man, you want to know what? When I come, it's just like. It's like running a marathon, so I just can't and shouldn't because, like, it's just going to take away my hours of, like, really, like, how I do my sport. It's like, (laughs) it's four seconds and three tablespoons, you maniac. What are you even talking? Like, your self-obsession with your, like... With their dick and their car. Yeah, I mean, that's just crazy. And and I just, like, it's when people, you know, it's just... Learn how to manage your time and your shit and your cock. Yeah. <laughs> Learn how to manage your cock. Yeah. Jerk off. Treat a woman like a person. It's not hard. I mean, <laughs> I think, yes. That's why I think most, yeah, male politicians should have to jerk off, right? Before they do anything. Because it's just like, I think like you're, the blue balls are, are fucking with It's affecting with everybody's lives. chi. Yeah. I don't, none of yeah. us want to feel the repercussions of you not jerking off. Please just jerk off. But also, yeah. and, and, and to put a fine point on why this is super true, not only should you jerk off, you shouldn't um, avoid it or try to ban others from doing so. Like, yeah. fun fact about Ted Cruz, when mm-hmm. Ted Cruz was Solicitor General of Texas, mm-hmm. he actually implemented a law that you couldn't buy or sell more than six sex toys or it would be a federal offense because you would be trafficking in sex toys. What? So. Not kidding. So the University of Texas, the women were carrying around their vibrators on the outside of their backpacks because you can have <laughs> you can have open carry in Texas. And they're like, fuck that shit. We're going to open carry our vibrators. I desperately wanted to do a vibrator buyback program in Texas oh, where you so like stand funny. on a flatbed oh truck so in a Walmart, you know, just being like any vibrator, no questions asked. Bring it in, dump it in the box. We'll give you 20 bucks. Nobody's going to turn you in. We just want to get some of these vibrators off these streets. We just want to get them off the street. That's all we're doing. I we're not going to ask that. for your ID. You don't have to wash it. Just drop it in the box. Take mm-hmm. your 20. Go home. So wait, so was it, could you own legally more guns than vibrators in Texas? 100%. For sure. What? And yes. <laughs> yes. God you, damn. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that I get so that I get so fired up about is the way because I I know people who are really into like the Second Amendment and guns. And I'm like, how do you not see the parallel the way that you feel free and like you're preserving your yourself by owning this gun? How do you not Mm -hmm. see that that's how women feel about their own fucking uteruses? Yeah, that sort of that yeah. right to that kind of freedom. Like I, the way they talk about guns and their freedom being taken away in that way, and they don't see the parallel about how we would feel about that about our own bodies is just astounding to me. I know. Yeah, the, <laughs> there's a. I mean, obviously, we've talked about this before, but the cognitive dissonance like that it takes to kind of just ignore, you know, what other people are are saying and and fit it to exactly how you feel is well. Strong. You have to see women as people. If uh, oh, Brandy, <laughs> in order what to kind see of their horse shit is that? <laughs> Why are you bringing up that bullshit? I know. Like I'm just a weird people, hippie. Blah, blah, blah. I don't well, know. Well, that's I just... like I love to these same people who have 
like think that these masks are taking away their freedom and they're literally men standing with my body, my choice signs mm -hmm. because they don't want to wear a mask. Yeah. And they are the same people who are outside abortion clinics also trying yeah. to tell women it's not their body and not their choice. And I'm like, you know, here's the thing about your mask mm -hmm. is that if, if I'm pregnant and I stand six feet mm -hmm. away from you, I'm not going to risk you getting pregnant. Like, that's not how it works. I don't spread pregnancy near you. In fact, I spread <laughs> yeah, to right. get pregnant if you want to just, you know. Split hairs, I guess, if you will. But, like, <laughs> it's so dumb. Like, it's just, like, why are you... Honestly, I don't... Like, me, people who've never been oppressed in society sure get oppressed easily. They're like snow, oppression snowflakes, mm. right? Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, for sure. Percent. I can't believe how many men I've had tell me, like, white men have had tell me just... I hate the word privilege. <laughs> I hate the word yeah. privilege. I'm sorry, is that word triggering to you? Is there, I'll use a different word. <laughs> like, well, did you guys see the, the I mean, there's been so many like, you know, videos of, of people being idiots about the mass stuff, but there was that one woman who like went to city council, I can't remember where it was, oh, and she was yeah, telling yeah. that story. She was like, I walked in to a store and they told me I could not be here without a mask. And just like, she was saying in this way that she was expecting everyone to feel bad for her and it was just like we're just laughing at you uh, you sound like a fucking idiot I don't yeah know. i mean does she know she would get kicked out if she went in without pants on too i mean we have certain things <laughs> I just they start, expect of you i just want to start carrying my dog squirt gun around with me and just being like no 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 <laughs> no no like that's i just want to start spraying people because i don't know what else because they aren't listening to logic i know i feel like we kind of need shot callers for politicians and those people that every time yeah. they say a lie or something that is you know is harmful that they have they yeah. act clear the collar is a is like a fact checking thing and it zaps you and you can't say yeah. it. It just That's keeps zapping idea. you if you lie. But like I saw a woman with a sign protesting saying, I won't mask my unborn child. And I'm like you. I'm like, bitch, you're wearing <laughs> pants. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you are like, I don't even understand. Like, you know, make sense. Have your hate make sense. Because I can't. Yes. If you're just going to please have a th line of hate that has a beginning, middle and end. Follows a narrative that is like, actually, I can't. I, like, I don't even know yes. what you're saying. I mean, it's all such no. gaslighty craziness. That's why, yeah. like, it's so hard to argue with. It's like trying to cut a piece of mercury. Yes. It's like, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is very... It is that is exactly there. correct. It is. It just feels... Mm -hmm. um, it just feels even weirder and and worse than ever. And just everyone whining. And I love these men comedians that are whining. And, you know, could you have your ninth oh Netflix special and just talk about privilege and how things are hard? And <laughs> all my all my friends got canceled. Oh, God. I know. Who's like, getting canceled? Nobody's gotten canceled. If you're Nobody's telling me that you're canceled when you're hosting Saturday Night Live or on your Netflix special, <laughs> how about you're not yeah. fucking canceled? Look up canceled. Yeah. Seems you're not. <laughs> Seems you are on television, <laughs> on national television, not being canceled. <laughs> Whining about being canceled. Like, get yeah, a do you want a, me to sit down and have a conversation with you about fucking canceled? Try to be an abortion like, comedian. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I can't. No, I know. As a wordsmith, it's like, just have some respect for what different words mean at the very least. I mean, like, at least. That's all you, I don't have to agree with you, but true. Just know yeah. you aren't canceled if you're talking in a public sphere. And if someone yeah. has invited you there and paid you. Yeah. And given you a platform on which to announce your own cancellation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, I mean, are you yeah. just mad that, like, some people get to challenge you? Like, that's yeah. the height of Yeah, well, I think that's what shit. it is. Yeah. That's the height oh, yeah. of That's it. my favorite thing, too, is first, first of all, just this gross uh, misunderstanding of the First Amendment. The First Amendment mm. doesn't mean that a... a private platform or company doesn't have the right to choose who does or doesn't get to speak there first of all but also mm -hmm. th th they think it's a violation of their first amendment if they say something they get think it's criticized it's like the people also have the first amendment right to criticize you turns you can out. say whatever you want that's how it works baby <laughs> <laughs> turns out i know and it's so funny mm -hmm. because it's like if you're mad that you want if you want to get invited to every party you're not going to ever get invited to every party so calm mm -hmm. down. Sorry, you've created a fan base 
based on your mm-hmm. thing that's made you rich mm-hmm. and you have people that follow you and like you. And then there's other people yep. that don't. And those people happen to yep. be vocal. And those people also are the cutest and the most fun and have the best food and the best <laughs> dance music. And so you're exactly. mad that the people who are the cutest and the most fun and have the best food and the best dance music are like, yeah, we don't really think you're cool anymore. So you just go there with all those other people who like you. And that's the, yeah. that's a lot in life that you have now. So just yeah, go. and that's you know what you should be fucking grateful. People have it a lot worse than you. Yeah. Just sit there and enjoy your little troll party. That's right. Yeah, it's gotta be. It has to be weird. I mean, it's not weird, I guess, for for like shitty guys who just have shitty fans because I would just hate knowing that that's who liked me the most. You know, but you like, know they our, created that for themselves. They did it. And yeah, they no, I know, it. but I I, yeah. I know that they're past it, obviously, because they stopped giving a shit a long time ago. But it's to me, it just feels so gross. Like our, I I'm very. Whenever we meet our listeners, like I love that. I'm so proud of like who they are and how fucking amazing Seriously. they are. And I just can't imagine. <laughs> What yeah, yeah. I like like hanging out with them. I I would I would hate to be hiding in a green room after a show, being like, oh god, all the boiled hot dogs are outside. This is a problem. That's exactly right. How does Ann Coulter feel every day? She's a fucking gender traitor, and she writes these books, yeah. and she has to like go yeah. to her book signing and just have all these drooling people say, thank God, like, you know, the Nazi party. Blah, blah. Yeah, you created all that. Yeah. Like you'll take anybody's money. You just don't care. And like mm-hmm. that's what happened. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think she's probably fine with it. They all probably just talk about their coach bags and what the fuck ever. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Yeah. Enjoy your pure yep. one imports fucking nonsense bullshit situation. <laughs> well, you got to make money if the only way you have friends is by paying for friends. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> got to keep it. It's going. true. I'd it's rather have losers. a small group of loyal people who like want to do good mm-hmm. things and are like. You, you know, I like what you stand for. And when you give me ideas to how I can be helpful, I want to go do that. Mm-hmm. And it's really fun. And like, I like a smaller well with cleaner water. Totally. Well, I mean, I will say the one thing that is exciting is that um, SNL uh, has just proven that um, we get paid to do open mics now. Uh-huh. So that's what I've, <laughs> I've learned from the last few monologues. It's exciting to see unworked material. We'll just get you paid now. I mean, so. apparently, I, I don't my uh, the open mics and Zoom comedy shows I've been doing aren't paying quite as well as SNL. But, you know, no. sometimes no. I just feel like, you know, I've also been somebody who has been super scrappy. And also, like, mm-hmm. and here's, I guess, what drives me so crazy is... I have made a career understanding that the Mm -hmm. things that I care about and vocalize and believe in are going to create backlash and havoc. I don't whine when people say I'm not booking you at my club or I'm not going to put you on my show or I'm not. I'll Mm -hmm. find where I'm going to be able to hit that. Right. So to hear somebody Mm -hmm. whining about cancel and this and that and the other thing, it's like Mm -hmm. just do your work. Find your people. Do your thing. You know, I shot my own special that's coming out in the middle of November. And it was like, I did it because I am, I was trapped in Brooklyn during the pandemic in the height of it, in the middle of everyone around me dying. And I'm from Mm -hmm. Minneapolis. And then cops yet again are murdering black people in Minnesota. And my town was burning Mm -hmm. down because systemic racism. And I wanted to talk about it because that's what I do. So I drove to Mm -hmm. Minnesota and I stood on the shore of a lake and my audience was 20 people in kayaks and I filmed a special (laughs) and and it's awesome. And the best part is I'm shoot. I couldn't. So I, I, I wanted to do a show about three things, the election, systemic racism and the pandemic. And so I'm shooting three days after the election the rest of mm-hmm. the special. So there's going to be, oh, wow. yeah. Ooh. So it's like leading yeah. up to, and then the whole election season, I'm going to shoot um, in this other mm-hmm. really cool, I'm not going to reveal like weird outdoor yeah. Minnesota setting, but like, I'm nice. just going to do it. My, I'm just doing it myself. Like, cause I just, I'm tired of, of asking permission. I'm tired of people telling mm-hmm. me, Oh, I don't know. And it's like, here's what I know. That I have yeah. am really successful. But mm-hmm. despite everyone going, mm, I don't know. Do we want to see a show every day about the news and comedy? I don't know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> How many are there now? I mean, it's like literally that kind of shit where you're like, yeah, what a yeah. terrible idea I've had. 
Oh, I don't you know. You created a genre. Well, no. When you said, if you sit around waiting for any kind of gatekeepers, it's just like, fuck this. Yeah. Like, no, you drive yourself fucking crazy. And like, I realized yeah. so much of this industry, I've allowed myself just to become anxious about something that at that point had become truly out of my control. So it's like, okay, well then what part of this is in my control? There's yeah. always something you can do. Your own instinct. Absolutely. And I feel like to me, like the one thing that gave me the confidence was seeing my instincts through. You know, I cannot tell you how, like literally the Daily Show. Then, then mm -hmm. I get a call like, oh, okay, um, we want to launch this radio network. And so I was like, well, what about this woman I heard? Somebody sent me her demo reel from, you know, she lives in Western Massachusetts and she's really smart. Um, listen to her. She's good. Ah, does anybody care about a woman from Western Massachusetts? I'm like, I don't know. Her name's Rachel Maddow. Let's bring her in and see if she's any good, <laughs> you know? But like I had to push and push yeah. and I just pushed yeah. because I was like my instincts, I'm trusting my instincts and I'd rather fail on my mm -hmm. ideas th and, mm -hmm. and know that I didn't compromise then succeed on something that was this half hollowed um, dream and then listening to some other person who didn't have the idea. So then they think your idea is bad. Like I'm done. No, follow your instincts 100%. people. Cause they're right. Ugh. They got you this far. Mm -hmm. They got you where you're at. They got you dressed this morning. Mm -hmm. They got you that good meal you cooked. They got your house. They got you, you know, good and bad stuff, you know? And like, so trust them. That's what I say. Yeah, I mean, pr fucking preach, absolutely. Preach. <laughs> Wait, I have to ask on the. I saw the pictures of your special. It looked amazing with the everyone watching in kayaks. Did you? Did anyone just wander up on a kayak who like didn't know what was going on? So here's the thing: <laughs> they didn't because I found this lake that um, a friend of mine lives on. You know, there's ten thousand lakes in Minnesota. When I say a friend of mine lives on a lake, um, yeah, you know, um, and. <laughs> They had this kind of private inlet. And so people kayaked from oh, a place. Perfect. And it was kind of a cool night. It was not like a hot mm -hmm. summer middle of the night. We shot the kayak piece um, in mid-September. And so mm -hmm. it was um, – but if somebody would have, I would have been fine with that. And it was also yeah. – Oh, yeah. No, I just was imagining someone being like, all right, I guess I'll just – Well, like during the sound <laughs> – when I was sound checking, um, you know – sound travels on water really profoundly oh, right yeah and so yeah. when i was sound checking i was very cognizant to not be doing my jokes or saying anything because you know who knows who lives on a lake so but i was yeah, like yeah. test test can you hear me and there was boats out in the lake waving um probably Aww. like oh what's going on there and then i'm like oh we're having a birthday party and slide um <laughs> but yeah it was pretty cool and i made everybody dinner like I made, it was, and this place I had like that. 10 picnic tables that were social distanced and I made everybody this picnic supper and they each had separate boxes and everything. So it was pretty cool the way that we um, did it. And I called it, the, there's an actual constellation in the sky called Corona Borealis. Um, <laughs> and in Minnesota, the Northern lights are very prominent because we're so far North. Mm -hmm. And so you can see the Aurora Borealis almost um, all the time in the summer, at least once, once in the summer. And so I made wow. masks that had the constellation on it and they glowed in the dark. And so you can see them on their boats oh my God, with the constellation so cool. on the masks. So it was really cute. Yeah. I'm sort of like one of those weirdo crafty Pinterest people. I mean, you wouldn't know I it, love but it. Um, yeah, I make my own vibrators. No, I don't. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Only six. I carve them know. on my porch. <laughs> just I actually retired dicks. from crafts because I just realized I fucking suck so bad at them. I think I'm just done for life. I think it depends <laughs> on the crafting. Here's truth be told, I'm like bad at like certain things like gluing and I have terrible penmanship and like when people scrapbooking, mm -hmm. like I'm not good at that kind of shit. But like I can um I can I can bake and I can do like a like I created a set out of old wood boxes and candles and stuff like that kind of stuff I can do. You got to find your craft. I guess mm -hmm. I do. I love like art direction and props and doing that kind. I am very visual and I love visual shit. But like every time I get invited to like a Christmas craft party. Oh, yeah. Kind of, no. Remember Color Me Mine, guys? I had a breakdown. I'm not. Oh, good yeah. At that Tess stuff. had a hard time at Color Me <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I feel that way too. If there's like, if you have to like follow like a line or like do mm -hmm. something straight line, like I can't, what I can't fucking do to save my life is hang a picture straight. Oh yeah. Like I'm terrible. Oh. when people like measure from the outer walls and do all this stuff and then they go, the nail goes there. I'm like, 
I feel and like then leveling. Wizards. I can't do. I'm oh, very God. bad at all that too. No. See, I weirdly I freestyle it, and I'm generally right. Wow. I have a weird. Really? Com- I have a weird confidence about being like that's where the attack goes, and then I'm pretty much always within like an inch, and I can just move it from there. Yeah. Wow. It's very it's very strange. I've haven't measured basically anything in my house, but everything is like hung pretty well. Oh it's my weird. God. I have to say it's. Yeah. That's one nice thing about being married is I have someone to hang my pictures for me. <laughs> that's really nice. I feel like that's. I feel like that's it, a big it was a mess. Something that I remember. But um, you know, I feel like I'm married and I hung up my pictures, and then now there's like the all of eternity part. <laughs> but then you get to look at your pictures for eternity. Oh, okay, oh, wait, that's think- fair. If that's what happens, and but you know, we. I think we well hold on let's let's take a break really quick I think Brandy froze so oh shoot we'll be back in a second everybody (laughs) hey everybody we're back on lady to lady I'm Babs I'm Brandy I'm Tess and (laughs) we are doing a special show the week of the election um we're doing a call-in show so if you want to call and leave us a voicemail we'd love to hear from you call 661-523-2423 and just let us know how you're doing tell us you know weird anecdote that's happening to you during quarantine how you're doing um if you have a lady problem you're welcome to leave that just whatever you want to say anything you want to complain about get off your chest confess we'll take it all Yeah, you got a rant you got a top secret you want to give to us yeah exactly you want to ask us some questions leave a question in a voicemail we love to hear your voices and um we just want to have like a fun uh november 4th episode <laughs> so leave us something fun yeah. why not Le- so call and us number a- again is it's 661-523-2423 and, and we're now gonna- we're back with liz you know it's like in my work um you know i i, I run a nonprofit that's like this combo of like how we can be artists and talk about reproductive health and rights and justice and abortion. And like the lies around abortion is it's like, there's literally people pushing something called abortion reversal saying that if you have a medication abortion and just don't take the other part, then you can load up with a whole bunch of hormones and then it'll stop your abortion. And it's like, that's never been tested. Yes never been tested, not been proven. There's a bunch of states who are forcing doctors to advocate for this. And the doc- Are you serious? Yes, it is unbelievable. And so it's the kind of thing where one doctor d- tested mm-hmm. six people. I think two people didn't, um, they didn't take the second pill and then they didn't have their abortion. And, and, and they took these other drugs. But like, it could be that you needed the second pill to have your abortion. Mm. It's not like these other yeah. drugs did anything. So you're loading people up with a whole bunch of dangerous hormones and asking them to carry a pregnancy. And first of all, what kind of assholes are doing a test study on people? Like if you're pro-life yeah. and you're like, we're going to do a test study on reversing abortion and it's probably not going to work a lot. So we're pro-life, but we're going to just like see if you have an abortion or not. You know, like the whole thing is a mess. Yeah. So they just promote all kinds of stuff that's garbage when people have later abortion now, uh, you know, when they have them for like really serious reasons. Like, you know, a lot of problems in pregnancy don't even occur until after the 20th week of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then people have to make really difficult decisions about whether or not they're going to terminate a pregnancy or you don't make it possible at all for somebody to access abortion earlier in their pregnancy. And so then they're or they can't raise the money or they can't get it together. Like there's so many falsehoods that are all just around to subjugate and demonize and keep women relegated to this place. That's really a problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just feel like it's just a bummer. It's just all a bummer. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we just work really hard at trying to educate people around abortion and to say the word and not have people be freaked out by it. And, um, you know, we need to talk about it more because if you want people to feel okay about having abortions and if you want to be somebody who somebody can, talk to or ask to come with or confide in um we have to open up the dialogue completely so any abortion experience is one that we're going to open up our ears and our in our hearts for people who need to talk about it with us i mean i think that's the thing because even i think people who say that they're pro-choice or or you know politicians who say they're pro-choice a lot of times they still stigmatize abortion Mm -hmm. even if in theory they are pro-choice and and, and reproductive rights is so seldom a major topic of discussion Mm -hmm. in any debate 
Mm -hmm. You know, it still is kind of, I think, culturally seen as this shameful thing. And I love so much about the work that you do of like, not even, it's not even just about access. It's Mm -hmm. like about changing about, the like, conversation about normalizing it, it and normalizing yeah. it because mm-hmm. it's a very normal medical procedure and we've taken it out of the realm of something that somebody might a procedure somebody might have to have um within their reproductive life and and mm-hmm. marginalize it and put it into this shameful space you know and i think a lot of people they really it's, it's not enough just to say you're pro-choice because it mm-hmm. if, if the choice if first of all, if all pregnancy outcomes aren't honored, there is no choice. You know, if the 16 year old person who doesn't have financial means, um, wants to have, have, have a baby, you know, because they got pregnant, we should honor that with programs that help them have a healthy family. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, or if the 16 year old is like, Oh my God, I'm not ready. I need to have an Mm -hmm. abortion. Um, we should honor that choice so that 16 year old can go on to live the life that they want to live, right? So we don't do that at all. And that's a bummer. But I do feel like you have to actively say there is no choice if there is no access. And so it's not even about just Mm -hmm. being passively pro-choice and voting against shitty legislation that comes down the pike from monsters. It's about saying, I'm going to be proactive in making sure that all roads that lead to any reproductive care that anybody needs Mm -hmm are going to be cleared and that path is going to be available for people that need that for birth control, for STD testing, for abortion, for all of it, you know? And so that's, you know, it just has to be. And those of us who have benefited from access to all those things um, need to speak up when we can, you know, to say I'm here because abortion, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac is here because of abortion. (laughs) We need to start saying that kind of shit. Absolutely. You know, all the things we love. <laughs> let's just find a way that like chocolate's here because of abortion. Let's just let's just do six degrees of abortion <laughs> for everything that we love to show people that without abortion, you wouldn't have roller coasters and water and French fries and chocolate and and uh, I don't know, all of it, all of it. Yeah. It is wild when you, th- yeah, you think about, you know, people try to obviously demonize like Planned Parenthood and stuff like that. And I just can't imagine ha- like what my life would be without it, you know, like how, like mm-hmm. all the, you know, STD tests and just like, um, just all the medical issues that I've had that they've helped me with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, it's insane. And people just, you know, paint it in this like evil way it just I don't know it's so hard because people are so set in their mind where they just think like this is just about like a little baby and you're stabbing it to death like that's what they want everyone to think because that's what's happening exactly that's what an abortion (laughs) is you go in with a little knife you just stab the shit out of a fetus Uh (laughs) (laughs) which would actually be adorable if they did it that way yeah just know that it's exactly like that if they sent in a little Chucky's from child play into your uterus I mean that's the thing there's but yeah I'm there is no knives there is no cutting in abortion by the way Mm -hmm. so anytime they talk about stabbing or cutting or whatever the hell I mean the whole thing just seems so nutty and I just feel like also in in the evolution of how we've talked about this issue you know like when we really started talking about, you know, reproductive emancipation and stuff, you know, women back in the day, rightly so, were just like, men, we don't need you to weigh in. All you've done is weigh in and control us. Just please let us. Mm -hmm. But we really need for men to allow Mm -hmm. women to show up and allow women to, and people with uteruses to stand up and, Mm -hmm. and, and fight. And they need to be there with us in our court and also prioritize that our humanity, because if you're yes. saying that you are standing up for human rights and you're saying that we need equality across the board and that everyone on this planet needs to be equal, that is a mm-hmm. that is a all genders uh, fight, right? And mm-hmm. so yeah. it needs to be like when a candidate says, "I'm I'm you know I'm a pro life Democrat," it's like no, that can't no. be okay. It can't be okay no, for people, and it can't be okay no. for men, and it can't be okay. You know, we all have to be like mm-hmm. women deserve the full range of economic freedoms and reproductive freedoms that put them on that path to whatever they need to do. And, and I am, and and, and it's not a good world and it's not a free world until that happens. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that that point is not discussed enough either that, that the other side of reproductive freedom is if you do want to have a kid, 
having fucking access yes. to child care so that having a child, child doesn't care. derail you professionally. A hundred percent. And also just derail you in every way possible. Um, you know, mm-hmm. like being able to say, if you are a person who is of, of, of not as much means that we want to make sure that you have the cap- cap- capability mm-hmm. to feed and care mm-hmm. and nurture yep. and all of those things um, mm-hmm. that don't make you feel overwhelmed that lead to, you know, other choices you might make, bad partnerships, um, you know. Mm-hmm. And in COVID, oh, my God, when COVID happened, the first thing that seven governors did in America was say that abortion is not essential and tried to sh- shut clinics down to have them stop providing care. And I can't wow. tell you how many folks were reaching out to our organization saying, can you help? What can we do? Can you imagine being housing insecure, food insecure, job insecure, and then realizing mm-hmm. you're pregnant and being like, oh. I can't do this. And so many people were mm-hmm. having to quarantine with their abusers, would find mm-hmm. out they were pregnant or not even abuser, but a relationship that was not, that maybe was going to go in a different direction, that maybe you were going to end. And then COVID forced a lot mm-hmm. of people to be in spaces that were not healthy, that were not safe, that were not fulfilling. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. guess what? You're COVID, you're in quarantine with someone, you're fucking. You just yeah. are. <laughs> like, and yeah. and then- If you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. But you know, if, like yeah. if it happens and you're just like, why? Sh- and mm-hmm. why is- Why is parenting a punishment? Can someone explain to me why you would force someone to parent if they said and have self-assessed that they would Mm -hmm. not, they can't, don't Mm -hmm. have the capability, Mm -hmm. and don't want to? Mm -hmm. To me, that is... Yeah, that's so odd. ah, Well, not only that, but you can only force a woman to parent. You cannot Mm -hmm. force a man to parent. So there's nothing in place... So men are just scotch free. They are they are inherently pro choice. Yes. If they want, they can always bone out. Yeah. Yes, it's mm-hmm. true. Do you know what I found out, you guys? This is fascinating. So I have a friend who is um who has a underage male, has an underage child, and he is sixty four. So he, okay. if you are a man who can qualify for social security and you have a kid, um, that kid gets your amount of social security as well. But what? Yes. Oh. But think about that. A woman can't give birth. Yeah. And have a kid under. At 65. <laughs> 65. So women don't qualify for that, it would never happen for a single woman, but it happened for a single man. That Whoa. is so insane. Right? So unless huh. you were adopted, unless you were adopted. Yeah. Right. But if you were a person having a kid, like mm-hmm. it's not happening for you. Isn't that wild? Jesus. That's trippy. So the the dad collects for both of them? Yes. They get double social security. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Flaw in the system. Yeah. Seriously. I know. <laughs> you know, I'm just dropping all kinds of knowledge. Have I just derailed your podcast completely? No, no. I'm no. just, I mean, this is what just it is. thinking about it. We're all just processing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually thinking about because I have a brother yeah. who's either six or seven. So I'm like, does my dad getting bonus social security? <laughs> your dad could. Your dad could. Could be. If your dad knew I about it. seeing your... Your I don't think he knows brother, your little brother like rolling up in one of the like a little <laughs> uh, one of those mini cars just like what's up <laughs> yeah. 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 have your dad <laughs> look into it because it's wow. real mm-hmm. maybe yeah. I can at least use this to my benefit or my dad's benefit <laughs> yeah, yeah. Social security tell benefit. him about it tell him about it <laughs> <laughs> that's wild okay we're all gonna keep continue processing this we'll take it we'll be right back we'll be right, in a second <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Lady to Lady. I'm Brandy. I'm Babs. I'm Tess. And we're here with Liz Winstead. I'm Liz. <laughs> Perfect. I'm Liz. Uh, we're going <laughs> to give some advice if you want to help us out with that. Sure. If you want to ask us, you can send it to lady to lady comedy at gmail.com. Lady. Lady. <laughs> 
problems. Lady, lady problems. Lady problems. Do you have them? Lady problems. Do you have them? People have them. Here we go. Hi, gals and guests. I'll just jump right in. I moved to New York City from California in July for a new job and shortly thereafter ended a 1.5 relationship after long distance wasn't working. It's essentially my first time being single in the quote real world, aka not a lot, not in college or in the tiny national park community I worked in the last two years. So it's a bit daunting. The problem is one of my very good friends lives in the city and I think I have a crush on him again. We were friends in college and started casually dating slash sleeping together a few years ago, the summer after we graduated college. We've kept up with each other ever since, but as since before, sorry, before I started dating my last boyfriend, we even sexted randomly and were often flirty, but because we were across the country from each other, it was a moot point. Well, now I'm here in the city and we have the same friends that hang out every week in our little COVID safe pod. I'm still attracted to him and want to seek out a sexual relationship, but I'm worried he no longer feels the same. I want to be straight up and honest, but I'm afraid if he rejects me, it'll make our friendship really awkward. I guess my question is, how can I approach this without losing my friend or should I just not broach the subject and date outside the friend group instead? Am I just horny because I haven't had sex in almost a year, even though I was in a relationship for part of it? Yes. So sorry for being so long winded. I love you guys and thank you for this podcast. Stay safe. Dude, she's for sure going to fuck this guy. Yeah, you should definitely <laughs> fuck this guy. Number one, he's in your pot already. Don't go outside of your pot as often as you can. Um, and uh, you, you're friends, so you, there's some inherent trust there already. Also, uh, he, yeah. I 100% guarantee you, is planning on fucking you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's odd she can't tell what's going on. So I'm not sure what his what's going on on his end. But I would, I guess she's asking if she should go for it or if she should like, yeah, you know. Oh, Tess, I mean, I do hold think on. Some Tess is frozen. She's frozen up. Frozen up. Oh. <laughs> it's a good freeze okay. face. Yeah, it is a good freeze face. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to catch up. <laughs> She'll get there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can just keep going. I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I do think that there is like in COVID, I think it is this weird like disclosure of like there is more of a conversation. I think that should happen before just like hooking up. So I can see like it being hard to know who pulls the trigger on that to be like, Hey, I know that we are putting it, opening ourselves up to like a big risk. It's like an STD conversation, but even bigger, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how COVID feels. Well, It's a weird, it's even bigger, but it's like also both of you mm-hmm. could maybe catch it. Yeah. Either of you, you could bring it in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Welcome back to us. <laughs> I guess I just always, um, I always, mm-hmm. um, get a very strong pit in my stomach whenever mm-hmm. I hear, women say or ask i don't know how to say i don't know if i should ask i don't because truth be told this is what's wrong in the world is that Mm -hmm. the fact that women have to wonder if they should ask for what they want because the ramifications Mm -hmm. of what they want is always greater than their making their needs meeting their needs and mm. and it's it yeah. it it's a problem in in a small scale like you should ask for what you want and put it out there and see what happens if that's truly what you want um because why wouldn't you try to get what you want you deserve it but but in a larger scale for me it's when you look at like constantly when we are talking about me too and, and, and sexual assault and all these kind of things. It's the same situation where there's no clarity in the situation because men are like, I was getting signals from her. I was getting this vibe. I was feeling this thing. Never the woman able to say, this is what I want. This is what I don't want because there's ramifications to saying what you want. There's ramifications to saying what you don't want. And we need to reclaim the narrative around our needs and our wants and what expectations mean and what rejection means. We just need Mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that too is just starting to get comfortable with rejection, which I think is so we're in such a unique situation with comedy because we're able to build up such a nice high rejection tolerance that I think Mm -hmm. that helps, you know, but um, so who gives a shit? So you get rejected. You're not going to the emergency room over getting rejected. No. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and like think- guy, guys aren't going to get weird about it either. They're going to be like, oh, okay, well, she wanted to fuck me. Cool. Well, I'm not going to do it right now. 
it's it's always right now. Also, guys <laughs> always want to yeah. fuck you. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. if he's not in a relationship, he's going to want to fuck you. What mm-hmm. you have to decide is what is your emotional stake in it? Yes. Yeah. Are you worried that exactly. he doesn't have the emotional stake that you want him to have? That's a different question. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, is are you truly just looking for a friends with benefits situation? And will you be cool with that? Or will, do you think this is going to lead to you getting feelings for him? And then I mean, mm-hmm. it sounds like, yeah, she really actually likes him. Yeah, she uh, it's, it's a moot him. point, though, yeah. because she's going to fuck him. Is it a great idea? Maybe not. You're going to fuck him. Yeah, I mean, you have to get kind of get over the whole, is it going to make our friendship circle awkward thing? Because that's just life. You know, it's like yeah. shit happens, people hook up, and then you see you see how it goes from there. So um, yeah, part of being an adult just- is just learning how to fuck people and be polite about it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I mean, true. I do get the, I get, I get the that it, there's more pressure right now because especially if you have your COVID pod, it's not like you've got a lot of other people, your a lot of other mm-hmm. group friend, you know, friend groups to like go out and hang out with. But yeah. what do you think though? I, I mean, she's asking really if she should approach him about it. I mean, I think that's the biggest question. And so I don't know because I honestly, I have been very aggressive like and asked for what i wanted and it didn't really lead me to that many great places in the past so i don't know if that's the (laughs) that's the answer either yeah i mean well they also have a history like they used to like sex and like um were flirty and and they used to sleep together like they already have like a history of this i think this is just like a hand on the leg situation (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah i would let it happen naturally because it sounds like yeah. you're also in the fun part of it so i would mm-hmm. let the crush kind of play out and just enjoy yeah. it and see where yeah. it goes and yeah put the hand on the leg if you need to move it to the next level <laughs> and i mean i will say this it doesn't happen for everyone but i did hook up with one of my guy friends and ended up marrying him <laughs> so Very true there you yeah. go so you know you never know <laughs> No, I think a lot of great relationships start that way. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't be caught up in the in the awkwardness of what might happen later. That's just yeah. not you know yeah. you don't want to live your life that way. And also you just did, really yeah. check in with if you know she's mm-hmm. asking and answering a lot of questions for herself in this. You know yes. I don't know if I just want to get laid. I don't know if I'm just lonely. This person that I used to be with is now here in New York. You know like you know mm-hmm. ask and answer like these things for yourself. You know spend some time with them and, and is it like. Are you just trying to find companionship in a time when this shit's crazy? Or is this person mm-hmm. somebody you've been thinking about um, off and on? And you even said, like, you know, we were having some sexting stuff. So, you know, mm-hmm. get right, yeah. get it, get your shit straight with yourself before you mm-hmm. make a move. What you be Absolutely. honest, be honest with yourself for what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And any of those outcomes are totally fine. Yeah. It's also right. Yeah, shit's weird right now, and if it's just like you just want a, a COVID boyfriend or COVID whatever, like that's <laughs> nothing think, wrong with that. <laughs> I honestly know quite a few people who I think have just ad- adopted COVID boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so many people are like a rental service. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so many people who do comedy quarantine are like, yeah, I have a boyfriend now, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, I think, well, I mean, it, it's because like, right now part of the conversation is like, hey, I'm attracted to you, but also I think you're smart enough to not get me killed. Like, that's the weird extra layer to it now. And like, honestly, high compliment. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Because because there's a lot of people that I'm like, oh, you're an idiot. You're an I- you're you're a hot idiot. But like, you're going to you're going to fuck somebody <laughs> up really badly because you don't know how to wash your hands. You're too hot <laughs> to have learned to wash your hands and nobody should fuck you. That's right. right. It's wild. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we all know how guy, guys always have a, a damp towel in their bathrooms, but unfortunately, it's not from washing their hands. <laughs> what no, is that about? It's disgusting. It's so gross. It's so uh, the smell, the mildew smell of men's in their twenties bathrooms. I will never escape. It's something uh, else, and it really it's something that you sit there on the toilet and you just think about all your own decisions. You know, I think it's a, it's there for us too. I mean, the guy. Yeah. I will never forget being at a guy's apartment and there was mushrooms growing out of the carpeting. Oh, God. oh my God. It was the grossest Ooh. thing oh ever. It was God. really just like oh. the Valhalla of awful. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. That's. That vision is going to like haunt my haunting. dreams. It's haunting. Oh, this just gave me a good idea for the top secret session that. <laughs> 
That's a great oh my God. A bedroom I was in that I... Oh, boy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Flashbacks. Oh, I'm just yeah. having flashbacks of, of a few different... I think the worst yeah. bedroom for me was one where there was so much clothing on the floor that it was level with the bed, which was also covered in clothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> so just like a sea, a sea of a layer. It was like a rat's nest of mildewy t-shirts oh, that God. almost become like t-shirt bricks. Oh, Man. God. Well, m- maybe he was just trying to build a conversation pit out of old t-shirts. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> that is God. not good. <laughs> well, uh, listener, as long as uh, none of those situations... See how see how long he washes his hands for, and then figure out if you want to fuck him. Maybe or not. that is the bonus of dating in in this time because you have to Facetime with people before you can like really meet, and so you have to see what their place looks like. Yeah, <laughs> if they, you have to see. You have to be able to kind of get if it's a mushroom apartment or not. Hundred you know? percent. Yeah, and you yeah, get to like see them wash their hands and how they really are. Exactly. Just, and if they feel organically mm-hmm. like putting their mask on and organically being six feet when you meet them, and like you know if stuff feels effortless and not like I'm on a date. So I have to act this way. Like, you know, yeah. you can really get that sense from people. That is true because like so often it, you get, it, it's like, Oh, this guy's kind of cool, you know, in the regular world. And then at the end of the date, you're like, Oh, you're a fucking nightmare. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. these are all things that we can calculate earlier yeah. on now. Yes. <laughs> I keep, I keep saying, I think every guy should have to put a picture of his bathroom in his dating profile. Oh my and, God. Like, a, real ba- a real bathroom picture. <laughs> <laughs> that would change the world bathroom. And then I honestly, I want to see the bed. Yeah. Yep. Post your bathroom. Bed. Post your bed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Let me see that wall art. Is it just a poster? Is there? Can some, we start this dating app? Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah. gonna start out as like the um, sort of like cake wrecks, but for apartments of people's yes. that you're fucking. <laughs> You know, it's like, I fucked this guy. Here's his bathroom. What the fuck? Maybe but that's I, just the website. I fucked this guy. Here's his bathroom dot com. Yeah. And I fucked this guy. Here's his bathroom dot com. I mean, I I'm going say, to go daddy right now to grab that. So, But also, but also I, I don't want to reward men. Um, yeah. You know, uh, maybe Ever. maybe it's more like I was going to fuck this guy and then I saw his bathroom. And so I did it. You're punished for having a no, shitty I'm bathroom. I'm not making it that far if we're not. I'm not getting there. Fair. I mean, we're just I, so d- I do desperate. miss I do miss like taking a shower in the guy's bathroom and then just like sampling all of his roommates, you know, bath and body. <laughs> like yeah. it's kind of just like your own little spa. You're like <laughs> Here's some stuff. I'll use this body scrub. Yeah. That'd it be is fun. always fun to use other people's toiletries. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Totally. Oh, yeah. That would be a fun little exchange, like the, a COVID exchange, just like a pod of people are just like, I want to put just travel sizes together of my stuff, and then we can just swap them. Like, That's actually a people. great idea. What have you discovered <laughs> yeah. in your impulse buying like a loony um, of oh, yeah. having oh, yeah. shit ordered? Like, is there a new thing that you discovered that made you calmer, feel better, was like a good mm-hmm. self care thing. Like, you know, self care exchange is not a bad idea. That yeah. is good. Yeah. Cause I recently got um, a white noise machine, which mm-hmm. has been like the best thing ever. But they're saying it might be bad for you. I just read an article. No. Really? Why? Why? What would it be? Um, that white noise machines could actually do more harm than good. I want you to read about it. Ooh, okay. Oh, oh God. Man. Don't take this. I have to have... I. That's how I sleep, <laughs> though. Because if I don't have it, my thoughts just go, like, over time. I understand. Oh. I am understanding. I'm just saying you have to take in information <laughs> when it's put out yes, there. You, you know, you it's do. not... Don't be one of those white machine mm-hmm. deniers. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Tess and I are going to become the QAnon of white, I don't white noise machines. Don't truth. believe the deep state. <laughs> don't bring me the truth. No. I want to be in a deep sleep state. And I agree. I want. The deep sleep state is important. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. It's very important. <laughs> I basically also just because I love coffee so much. Like I, it's so central to who I am and like my soul that I just can't bear the idea of drinking less of it. So I just have to double down on like sleep stuff. Like I have a white noise machine. I got Botox in my jaw muscles. So I'd stop grinding my teeth. I have a mouth guard. <laughs> Just All so you can drink like two pots of you coffee. You <laughs> refuse to cut back on the coffee. <laughs> Not even switch to decaf. Not even switch to decaf no, at a no, certain point in the day. That would be disgusting. 
<laughs> I just googled white noise bad like a caveman What's trying to figure deal? out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read about it all later. Well, but I mean, I could I could see that like anything that isn't like silence and darkness is probably fucking with you in some way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having lots of weird dreams, so maybe that's. The... Can you can you set them to just turn off after like ten minutes or something? Because yeah. like okay. And that's usually I I listen to a podcast or something for like and then have a timer that goes off after ten minutes and I'm usually out. No, I need it the whole night. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. I also yeah. like I well I'm also deaf in one of my ears, so like I've gotten I'm really spoiled in terms of sleep. Like I can have total silence as long as I'm sleeping with my left ear down. Mm. So the white noise machine allows me to sleep with my other ear down. I don't know it sounds weird, oh, but like interesting. I'm so yeah. super sensitive to sound in my left ear that if I hear anything it wakes me up because my whole life I've had my deaf ear up. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. The life of a Well, we're still going to read about it and figure it out. And we encourage all of our (laughs) listeners to listen to science. Listen to the white noise science. (laughs) And it may be that um, it's for certain kinds of people who have certain kinds of things. And maybe Mm -hmm. you don't fall into that category. And maybe you do. But, like, at least read about it. Okay. And just at least read about it. Friends. Yeah. I feel like this is going to be the time when they told us that flossing doesn't matter. And I was like, but I think it does. No, it totally does. I, I floss every day. I'm obsessed with flossing. So I don't even care. Yeah, I just was like, I think that we should still do it, even though well, the internet told us we don't need getting to. Getting dead food out from the middle of your teeth is never bad. It, no, it's a great, that it's a great feeling. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but they. It, someone said it. Well, it's like Again, the great milk debate. Is milk to, good? Yeah. Who knows? It, yeah. Ex- um, <laughs> <laughs> the what debate? The, the great milk. I feel like milk, oh, milk is like debate. always coming in into vogue or out of vogue, and I'm like, should is this good or bad? The for great me? milk debate. What are you doing? Well, like, yes. no, this, do you need yeah. do you need milk as an adult? Is a huge yeah. thing. Yeah, I think milk's the reason I have giant boobs because we got all the fucking cow hormones see, in our. See, in I, us I, I would say children. that yeah, the hormonal milk yeah. is real. Hormones in general yeah. and food is real. Yeah. You know, like. People who are four months old are getting their period. It's a problem. Yeah, it's yeah. really yeah. fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I I always blame McDonald's chicken nuggets for big boobs. Yeah, but milk is probably also <laughs> well, part yeah, of it. We all have our, our thing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I just want to spicy say. spicy nuggets give Ooh. you UTIs. So. <laughs> Damn. Google that, everybody. Google that first. <laughs> yes, I, you don't have to Google it. It's truth. Um, <laughs> Thank, Liz, thank you so much for doing the show. This so was so you. fun, y'all. Please have me back again more than every two Always. years. <laughs> we promise. It. It's too much You're fun. It's too much fun to talk to you all. I love you. Aww. So Aww. good to see you, you too. Oh. Yeah. Bye, Tell everyone everybody find where they stuff. Yeah, where they can find oh, all you. Oh, you can find um gems. you can find me myself on all the social medias at Liz Winstead. It's L I Z Z. W-I-N-S-T-E-A-D. And if you want to um, participate in taking some action on protecting reproductive rights and doing it in a fun way, um, we are managing all kinds of really interesting things at Abortion Access Front or Abortion Access Mm -hmm. Force. So you can just type those things in and you'll find them online and follow us and sign up to volunteer and um, it's fun. Yeah. And follow us for whenever the special comes out. I can't wait to fucking see this. It sounds so cool. Yes. Ugh. Yes. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. Thanks, fucking guys. Corona Borealis. Trailblazer. It'll, I'll let you know when it's coming out, but we'll let you, I'll keep it posted. <laughs> yes. yes. <Fuck> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, All right guys. guys. We're going to head over. Bye. We're going to head on over to patreon.com for top secret session. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Can't get enough of us? Subscribe to our Patreon for exclusive bonus content, access to our first 100 episodes, and more. Go to patreon.com slash lady to lady now to sign up. As little as a dollar a month keeps a roof over the glam cave and keeps you laughing, even when your coworkers stare. That's patreon.com slash lady to lady. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter and Instagram at lady to lady comedy. Join our Facebook group, Lady to Lady Podcasts, to chat with other fans about episodes or even post your own lady problems. Check out our website, ladytoladycomedy.com, for show notes, videos, and merch. And duh, follow our individual accounts, Babs Gray, Brandazzle, and Testify Barker for jokes and info and where you can see us perform live. And if you want to send us snacks, stickers, or a lock of your own hair, I don't know, whatever, our P.O. Box is 412-794, Los Angeles, California, 90041. And please, leave us a review on iTunes, but only if you like us. We love you. We love you. Bye. 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 Bye.